Well, happy Monday night. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Where are you from? Let us know in the comments as you pop in. I'm here in Pensacola, Florida. I'm a Dixie Bell content creator. And I want to, to talk to you a little bit about the project I have going on. And uh, tonight we're going to be showcasing two products that I posted in the description. Dixie Bell Glaze, which is basically the glaze I'm going to be working with is the Grunge Glaze. The Grunge Glaze has a little bit of a grayish tone. I could have gone with black, but I'm going to go with the Grunge just because it's a little lighter. And uh, don't always judge the container of uh, glaze by the bottom or by the color here. Because, for example, if you look at black, it almost looks blue, but it, it definitely dries more in the blacks. And then I also want to feature Dixie's Dixie Dirt. And I've got three. Let me just show you Dixie Bells. They've got ash, charcoal, and earth. This one you can kind of tell a little bit better by the color. I'm going to show you here on my screen. Um, one's a little grayer, one's a little browner. You just That kind of helps you tell and I think what I'm going to do, looking at the bottom of them, you just kind of need to determine how dark do you want to go. And my product, there you go. That probably is a good view right there. One's a little lighter, darker, medium. And you just have to determine that. I'm going to go, let's go with the um, ash. I think that's going to be a good combination. I don't want to get too dark and I don't want to get too brown. Um, so if you haven't tried this, um, it would be great for you to explore. And I put in the description that we were going to be uh, doing glaze, dirt, and old. My goal on this table behind me is I want to, um, I got this table kind of like an estate sale and um, it's old. And I say old because it was handmade. There's a lot of evidence of that. I don't know how old. Um, in fact, I'm gonna try and point to it. Right there is the top. Let me show you a picture. How about that? There we go. Oh, so that's me after I boss it. I should be able to click on this one more time. And that's the table before I took the top off. And you can see it's got a lot of stains. It's obviously been used quite a bit. And so I'm gonna re-sand that, not on this live tonight. And I'm gonna re-stain that. So I'm just freshening it up, but I don't want it to look brand new. Um, the top's gonna to look freshly stained, but it just is gonna be a really lovely piece when I'm done. Um, just to give you some heads up on where we are on this project, I did give it a good white lightning clean, and then I gave it gray boss coat. I love gray boss, it's my favorite, just because it just kind of gives me closer to a, a color not white. And so it's one of my favorite products that I use on about every project is Dixie Bell Boss, so make sure you have some of that. Um, yeah, crazy brush show, thanks Teresa Lee. I look forward to our live. And then I use Manatee Gray in my house since I've been here a couple years. I think um, pretty much all my cabinets, except all my bathroom cabinets, I use Manatee Gray. I really like it. One of the advantages of Manatee Gray is that it's probably the most neutral gray they have. In other words, all the other grays have a little either lean to a, a red tone, a warm tone, a cool tone. I just feel like Manatee Gray is very neutral. I'd be interested interested to know in the comments what your favorite Dixie Bell Gray is. Um, which one have you used? Let me just show you. You can see the difference. You see kind of the red tones in Mason Dixon Gray? Anyways, it worked really well for her project because her dog kind of has the gray tone. But like I said, not all the grays are, are just um, uh, uh, pure is the wrong word, but I really like the anti grays because it's just a nice, simple, basic, uh, neutral gray, if you can call it that. And uh, I have demonstrated this before on previous projects and may have it on my YouTube channel, but I'd like to bring you along and talk to you how you can use grunge and Dixie dirt. I think one of the last projects I worked on with this product was a, an old, uh, not old, a French provincial French um, vanity desk. And it's such a lovely tool, lovely technique to work with. So whenever you're using Dixie dirt, the key is that you need a binder. When I say a binder, you need something that's, I'm gonna say wet, but glaze has a little bit of top coat in it, so it, it really makes a good medium for that dirt to stick in. You can use other things like maybe a top coat. You can do it with paint. It's just not the same. 
Um, so I want to showcase that with you today. So I'm going to stand up. I've got my little Lazy Susan going on tonight. Uh, and you can see this on my website, bowtietreasures.com. Look under the shop and I describe how I made that. I get a lot of questions about that. And I want you guys to be able to understand or at least know where I get that. So this is Manatee Gray. And I'm going to keep my bottle there so I can make sure I remember not Mason Dixon Gray. So what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to knit, remove a little bit of the newness. This is just a fresh clean of paint. And so I want to make sure I drop that out. And then the other thing I'm going to have handy is just a rag that I've wrung all the water out of so it's wet but not dripping or too wet. So um, because this is spindles, you are going to be working around. This is one reason why I really like being able to use my Lazy Susan or you're going to be you know, jug jumping around. The other thing that I could do is I could turn this table upside down. And um, if you're worried about the feet, it would might give it also. An, but this is very stable. It works really well for me. I pretty much just have two um, pallet wood horizontal boards that allows me to have this. Um, so in case you're wondering how I got that on there. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna do my best to keep you guys close and on the action. So this is Dixie Bell's French tip. And the French tip is a natural bristle brush. And it does wear out over time, but I like how it has a nice tapered. The other brush that you could, you might like is the Bell brush. This is also a natural bristle brush. And it has a little bit wider of a fan, but it doesn't mean you can't use other brushes. These two just work really well for me for this type of project. Um, if you want, you can always get something like a, you know, just a one inch, a, a flat small, flat meter, which is basically inch, inch and a half. Those work really well. Um, I always like to sometimes pull out my, this is one of my oldest brushes, but you can see it's almost like a larger version of the natural. So just something that gives you a nice uh, feather, feather feel. We'll try the French tip for now. So. Another thing you might ask, I get asked a lot is, should you top coat first? And I don't. I rely on water to be my, um, re, uh, my medium to keep it from drying so fast, but work in small areas. And this little area, so I just did a quick mist and I'm just gonna go around and I'm just applying the grunge glaze. Again, that's the glaze I'm using right now. An alternative, if you want browns, you could use Van Dyke brown. You do not have to use the dirt. The dirt is just an element that's going to add more tech, uh, more age, and literally, as we would call it, more dirt. So that's the application of the glaze. And now I'm just gonna use maybe a craft brush so this is a Dixie Belt's craft brush. It's the largest one they have. And I'm just going to go into the paint and just get some of that dirt on my brush. And now I'm just going to go in there. You can dab it, you can brush it. I'm just gonna brush it on. And sometimes you'll find you need to come back in with more. I'm looking for natural places that that dirt might go. And I'm simulating, we might call this a faux finish. I'm simulating dirt has gathered in the cracks and over time hasn't really been wiped out. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use three brushes. So I'll use the French tip to apply it or I can use an, a different brush to apply and I'm just gonna demonstrate. And then this I'll use the bell brush. So this is the part that I like to do next. This is feathering in it or softening the edges. I'm getting rid of brush strokes. If you need to, you can use your wet rag and either wipe off places you don't want it to be. And sometimes even the rag might give it a little bit of texture. You should be able to see that I'm getting rid of any edges, any brush strokes. Sorry, I keep getting, that's the nature of spindles is I have to get in front of the camera sometime. So let me bring it in close. So just a tent of that very subtle 
you can see right here that I'm actually getting it into some of the cracks. So if you've got character dents and things like that, this will go, go in there really well. So if I compare that, you can see the one in the back really is just plain. So um, it's going to start eventually um, just coming together really well. You have a little bit of working time with this. The glaze naturally isn't going to dry really fast. So you should be good to go for a while to fine tune. Okay. And you can still also use your rag to wipe it off. Let's go to the bottom now. I'm only using this brush one because it's it has a nice firm um, pressure and I can get it into those cracks and crevices of the piece. I really don't want it so much on the high points. I want it in the recessed low areas. I also would tell you that the other approach you can take is you could cover the entire post with glaze and wipe it off. That way you do get some of that glaze into crevices and things. It really is up to you. So I'm going back in now with dirt. Cover it as little or as much as you want. I'm going to just almost randomize this a little bit. I don't want it to be super predictable. And I'm just touching the tip. The tip's going to start getting more and more glaze on it because you're wiping it in. So as you touch it, touch it in the um, dirt, you're going to get it's going to stick to more and more glaze. So you're going to start seeing some of the clunkiness go away. You see how I'm feathering that? You can cover an entire piece with this, maybe just some corners with it. And you see how I'm going up and down the post a little bit? I want to fade that out. Just my lights. Jenny, that's the fun part about this project. All right, I'm looking to make sure you guys are still there. So if you have questions, please put those in there. So <clears throat> you can see about right here, the glaze stops. So you might even come back sometimes and just Add a little bit of the residue from the brush you're using and just work some into the, some areas so that you have a little bit of a dusting of dirt. And look for any areas, for example, <clears throat> let me show you what I'm talking about with the rag. You see how it's all almost equal? If I come in here with my wet rag, I can wipe off high points. And it may not be that I leave it that way, but what that's going to do is just create a little bit of a highlight. Almost like, again, that the age is only in the cracks. <clears throat> and then you can come back with your brush and just soften that, that work I just did. There's a good chance that I may even come back and um, <clears throat> do some light distressing just to simulate again the age. <clears throat> so from a distance, you might see that I highlighted and, and removed some of it on those, those parts. But if you really like the idea of just the, the, the legs being darker than the top, then only do the glaze and the dirt down below and, not, and only do the, the glaze at the top. So you can be specific or you can choose which air, where you put your glaze and not, or the dirt. So you can make it dirtier at the bottom and not so dirty at the top. But <clears throat> And uh, if you come back later on and need to add more, just let that dry and set. It has a little bit of top coat in it, so you let that, that settle down. Let's work a little bit on the side and talk about how you might treat the edges in this area. It's a common place I often work. So, I may not always remember, but I, the misting does allow for the glaze to 
stay active a little longer and slide around. So let me just show you, for example, do you see I just put some, turn my light. There you go. Do you see how I put it right here? It's already looking aged. You do not have to use the dirt. I'm just using the dirt to go a little bit further than just basic glaze. I have found typically that glaze dar dries darker. So if you're not sure exactly how it's going to behave, I do recommend that you might just do a section first, let it dry, and then decide if you want to do the whole piece. If you just don't have any, if you haven't had experience with glaze before. So that's right there is just glaze. So now I'm going to come back in with some dirt. I'm going to go a little bit further. Do you see how much more intense that, that got than the right side? So many options to go with. I'm just, this just gives it a little bit more of authenticity, if you will. Now I'm going to come back with my bell brush and feather that out a little bit. <clears throat> you don't have to do this, <coughs> but I have, excuse me, I'm getting a drink here. But I have found if I don't do this, it's a little bit more of an abrupt edge because when that glaze dries, it does, it does, it does show an edge a little bit more. And uh, keep in mind, I also prefer to top coat. And since glaze has top coat in it, sometimes you just need to trust the finish. And when I top coat it all levels out, like if it seems shiny, I don't worry about that because the top coat's gonna neutralize that. So just look for anything else, like after I just blended it, I think I'm still gonna come back in with a little bit more dirt. It's still tacky. And just, you can dab it in if you want, totally fine. I like more of that soft vignette feel than more of a dab, but it just depends on the project. You can try this with a Voodoo Gel Stain, but remember Voodoo Gel Stain does not have any hop coat in it. So it's not as, sticky per se very earthy very um, just has a little bit more character to it and i don't know if you could tell but the left post is done and this one is not now right here there's a dent and some it looks like it's been hit a few times so let's ac accentuate that i'm gonna put some so i'm coming back with the glaze a little bit and some dirt so I really want to highlight that damage because that's the character of the piece. And I'll also feather that out a little bit. Now I'm going to, going to use my rag to remove some of this. So I'm actually just almost like dabbing and wiping. I'm trying to get rid of the edge, but I don't want to lose all of that. So basically I'm just putting more darkness in there still could use a little bit more in that spot all right but because of the way i'm putting it on there i'm wiping off the early work i did so i just sometimes you just may want to attack an area and let it stand out this is where i was saying you could glaze the whole piece and then only add dirt in the crevices so you have a lot of options let's continue on this last or this far post And this may be something that you can do on, I've done it on just jewelry boxes before and not entire projects. But you want a piece to look a little bit more authentic, aged. This is a subtle way of doing it. So you be as um, liberal or conservative with it as you'd like. 
Let's put some up for the top. So on the top right, I'm about to show you. We already have some right here, a little bit over there, but nothing here. So we're going to kind of bring all this together. That'll add, adding some mist to your brush will also add water to your um, brush and you can move the paint or the glaze a little bit more. I do apologize, I have a lot of, it's hard to get the camera everywhere I want it right now. So trust me that I'm, so I'm gonna do that, what I just described, I'm gonna miss the top of my brush because I've got an area back here that could use a little bit of starting to set on me and dry and I want to loosen that up a little bit and that's much better because if I try and do it on everything just be careful because you can start moving that glaze around for comparison so you can see here how the dirt's really pushing that age look this side doesn't have as much so you can get really aggressive with it and I like that they're not the same because you don't want it to be perfect. But if I can make this, if I can spin this around, I should be able to compare it to a side that has nothing. It just lacks that character. So there's quite, quite a bit of difference. Worst case scenario, if you ever get to the point where you're not happy with it, it's easy enough to just simply put another coat of paint on there because we're not mixing with a custom color, just start that post over and uh, give it another give it another try, right? And let's work down this whole side. I think that'd be a good test for us. If you're catching on replay, let me know. If you've got questions, please put those in the comments. I'm so glad you guys are uh, enjoying the look. It's definitely different. It's not blending and all that kind of stuff, but it's a very valuable technique for the faux finish look that I like to accomplish. And it's nice that I can also look over on the back side over here. I'm not sure I can still work on it, but there's a hard line I'd like to soften. I misted my brush. That's doing pretty good. So just keep an eye on it. Like I said, things dry differently and, um, you know, they might not give you the look you want, but as they start drying, you'll start seeing some areas you might want to touch up and that's perfectly fine. I missed a couple areas that I want to put some glaze. And this is me working. Um, I know we're kind of doing the same thing over and over again, but if you're still here, I'm going to keep going. And uh, I think it'd be nice to kind of finish out um, the rest of this piece. So I'm going to miss this side, work top down. I'm still using the one inch flat. It's the flat small. Glaze really does go a long ways. I've had this grunge glaze for quite a while because I don't use it so often, but a um, container shouldn't last you a while unless you just go crazy and just love the stuff. I forget about the bottom. Probably need to go back and do that. So here we go. Just put it on there. Now I'm going to go back and put some 
We're using, you, in case you missed it, I'm using ash. It just was the more grayer option of the other ones. The other ones were more earth tones, and this one's more on the black, and that's working really well. Kind of fighting the lights a little bit because my lights catch the shit. That... So you see how aggressive I am on this one compared to the other side? That's okay. I'm not going to see this side and the other side together. But you'll notice that by the time I start do doing this to it, feathering it out, it does dissipate the intensity of that a little bit. And that's why sometimes I do like to go back and add a little bit more because this kind of takes a little bit of that grungy dirt feel out and makes it a little bit more vignetted. But if you like that edgy gr uh, grunge or earth feel to it, then you can always come back like right now and go ahead and add, maybe stipple it in and just leave that like it is. You could even use this brush and that really does give it uh, a bit of an authentic, not get too crazy with it, but, and you can still feather that out. I will tell you that if you're trying to be a very, you know, you want a lot of people to like it, not everybody likes dirty pieces, right? So, so yeah, you do as little or as much if you want to tone it down. Your brush can do that, just give it a little, while it's still movable, give it a soft, soften it. Just up to you. Let me show you real up close, really exciting look. So this is, um, you can see here some of the spots from me spraying the other side, but just look how um, it all just come together with the spray. And I just love the, the tones of that. So coming together really well. So I hope that was very helpful to you in the overall aesthetic. And after that, I felt like it needed a little bit of distressing. So I used an 80 grit sandpaper and I just scuffed up areas and you can actually see some of the scraping there. But once I finished that up, I just wiped it all down and top coated it with a nice satin clear coat. And I think it just gave, gave it a nice extra level of age. So the gray worked out really well, I believe. I, you can see on the sides, I distressed that as well. But that American Honey No Paint Gel Stain Top, along with the gray chalk paint, just uh, there's a cool before and after of the top. I really like how that looked. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Let a friend know, share um, this process with them. Hopefully that will help many of y'all try some new things, especially in the kind of aging look. But I'm here in the studio, always glad to join you. Until next time, y'all be creative, do something awesome. Take care, we'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.